everyone and welcome to the Singa Cup 2020 to everyone watching. The Singa Cup is an annual youth football tournament hosted in Singapore since 2011. And this year, the Singa Cup is celebrating its 10th year anniversary. And with all the things going on in the world, they have put on a positive spin by reinventing themselves and creating the e Singa Cup virtual event. I am Natasha Alkiraz, and it's an honor to introduce everyone to three of the best Southeast Asian players that will be joining us for today's special episode. First up, we have Hassan Sunny from Singapore, who has had playing stints in Thailand and currently playing for SPL club Lion City Sailors, and of course, a mainstay for the Singapore national team. In 2016, the UK-based The Telegraph ranked him at number 18 on its list of the world's top 20 goalkeepers. Second, we have Se Stefan Schrock from the Philippines. Schrock started his playing career in Germany and played in the Bundesliga. Currently, Schrock is playing in the Philippine Football League. He is captain for both the Philippine club United City and the Philippine national team. Schrock played a crucial role in United City, then named Ceres Negros, to win three consecutive PFL titles from 2017 to 2019 and received numerous awards in 2019, including Golden Ball Award. Last but not the least, we have Luong Suan Truong from Vietnam. Truong has had stints playing in the top league in Korea and Thailand and currently playing for V-League club Huang An Gia Lai, Truong also plays for the national team. He played a pivotal role for Vietnam in winning the AFF championships and helped the Vietnam U23 team secure the silver medal at the AFC U23 championships in 2018. So Hassan, Shrock, and Truong, welcome to the show. Thank you for making the time to be with us today. Thank you, Natasha. Nice seeing you again. Nice to see you Thank too. You. Nice to see you guys. And each of you, let's go straight into it. Each of you has had experiences playing away from home. Um, what are the challenges that you had to face? Perhaps we could start with you, Hassan, who, of course, played in the Thai League. Um, it's, it's never easy being in a, a foreign country. And when I was in Thailand, I considered myself as a foreigner. And although I'm in... Uh, I'm an Asian, I'm an Asian, so it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a vast difference when I play in Singapore and in Thailand, uh, in terms of culture wise, but uh, football wise is a is a big difference, and so um, knowing that uh, you know when I was there I was a foreigner, and and I had to you know step up uh, a level ahead of the foreigner of the locals. Because I have to be better than locals, you see. If if not, then what's the uh, what's the point of having me there? And so eyes, you know, it, it, when you are a foreigner in the team, eyes are everywhere. Locals, the management will take uh, will look at you twenty four seven. Know what you do off the field, what you do on the uh, on the field. So ex obviously, expectations are very high. And, and and once you slack or even ten percent or five percent, then then they'll question you. Then they will have talks on you know let's bring in a new foreigner, you know, like that. So um, I no, I took that as a positive. Um, I took that very positively. I said, okay, why not? Uh, with this, I I can be a better player. So you know, it keeps me on my toes every time. Even in training, I feel like uh, I treat it as a as a game. So, yeah, so I, I can safely say that I improved a lot uh, when, when I was there because all these small little details uh, played a big part. Luang Truong, of course, um, you've played in the K-League and in the Thai League. So what are some of the challenges that you had to face playing away from home? Well, I think, um, uh, yeah, honestly, it was a great experience for me, I believe. And... Uh, Honestly, it was also a very, very hard time in my career so far. Uh, but uh, if I have to choose again whether to go or not, I would say yes. And I think the most difficult thing for me is how to settle my life there as quick as possible. Because uh, you know that uh, for K-League Classic, 
and um, I come from a lower level uh, than 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 lower level league than Kalik Classic. So you cannot say that uh, you you're gonna do the, exactly the same what you have done so far in Vietnam. Uh, no, so you have to push yourself a lot uh, because Korean football style is about uh, speed, physical strength, power. Uh, yeah, I think it's very, very tough for me that time. Definitely, and you were able to play there for two seasons. How about when you moved on in playing for Buriram in the Thai League? Uh, the time Buriram was also a good experience, but uh, at that time I was at not my my best. So, well, I would say that I was not successful there. So. I came back to be like this season and, and, and continue my career in Vietnam. All right. And how about for you, Schrock? This time around, I'll switch the question up. You came from a top league in Germany. What challenges did you face moving to a developmental league in the Philippines? Uh, there's always uh, changes, uh, regardless if you go from Bundesliga to the Philippines or coming from uh, Vietnam going to the K-League, there's always uh, challenges, but you have to embrace it and uh, you have to face it right on. Um, the basic, the bottom line was uh, the league was not so organized, maybe as in, in Germany, the training facilities are lacking here and there of, of the right equipment, of the right environment uh, for the athletes here, but um, there is no such big deal for me. Uh, you you go on, you take the challenge right on, and then you perform at your best. Simple as that. Definitely, as you said, of course, wherever you go, there will always be challenges. And of course, despite these challenges, how are you guys able to maintain your focus and, of course, motivate yourself to get better and continue to produce top quality performances? Uh, let's start with you, Hassan. Um, first thing first, I think... We have to take care of ourselves in terms of what we eat and the proper nutrition, proper sleep, uh, sufficient rest, and and not so much of, of you know uh, late nights. Um, so uh, you know, I took very, I took good care of myself because I know that I have to uh, I have to be better than the players there, and then and. and and you know, because like I said, eyes are everywhere. You know, if you if you are found in one of the nightclubs, you know, just imagine that. And and what would the locals the locals say? Uh, you know, so and you know, that's why I said that I took it I took it positive, positively. And 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 like I said, there will be people or there will be players looking at you. And and if you are if you lead by example, you will be a good role model. So um, that's why I had. Uh, to like behave myself in order for me to 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 show good example to the younger ones. Definitely very important. Of course, as you yeah. said, when you treated every game and every training like your game, that's really what pushes yes. you to that next level to make sure that you maintain that performance that you had all throughout all your right. career. Okay, how about for you, Truong? Uh, well. I had to spend a lot of time out of the pitch uh, when I was in Kaili Classic because of my injury. Uh, that time, everything seemed to be very, very bad to me. And uh, I thought that I could not move on, but uh, I just told myself that uh, just try the best I can, even I don't get good results, but uh, at least I don't give up. And... Um, at the end of the season, I had opportunities to play the last few games of the, the league. Those were very difficult matches for Inter United, uh, which means that uh, you have to win to maintain the team position so that you won't get uh, relegation. And I did pretty well. So, yeah, uh, I wouldn't have this kind of opportunities if. I did give up, so, yeah. Definitely inspiring. Um, and how about for you, Shrock? Well, motivation is, is a thing that comes and goes. Um, you have days where you don't want to get out of the bed or you have days where everything 
uh, you want to touch or want to do is related to football. But it's a discipline basically that keeps you uh, in in a good performance and a good sharp physical condition. And in the end, it's all in, in your head. You know, you you tell yourself you're feeling shit and you're feeling shit. But if you tell yourself you you're willing to work hard, you tell yourself every morning you're not there yet where you want to be, then it's no, not a big deal, not a big problem to get up every morning and then do what you love and do what where your passion lies. So simple as that, you go tell yourself you want to be successful, then you will be successful. Great insight to that. And of course, all of you have all played very impactful roles when it comes to the national team. Um, what are some of the traits and habits that you need to build to be able to be the best in the country? Truong? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, you always have to be fresh, always have to be ready all the time because uh, you are doing the job which thousand players out there want to do. Uh, if uh, about playing for the national team, is national duty. Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, such a great, great honor. But uh, in the other hand, if you don't take the chance and make and and you make a lot of mistakes during the game, you might not have any chance again. So I think one of the best habits you should have is being positive and never give up. Try hard all, all the time, and you will get good results. And uh, but also, you have to be yourself always. You 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 not trying to be someone else. And I think you don't need to push yourself too much because you will also take care. Of it. Focus hundred percent for football, and don't get any distraction from from outside. And how about for you, Shrock? To create habits, you you have to have a good mindset. You you really want to do what what no one did in the country. So in in the national team, that comes together the best 22, 23 players, or even 30 on a camp. And uh, you see there is a lot of, of crafty young kids gunning for your spot. And then you have, there is your discipline. Every morning you get up, every day you do your best, you train hard, you sacrifice a lot. You will not get to see the family that often. You will not get to taste the food you want to eat. You might not get to drink the beers you want to drink in the evening. So there is a lot of sacrifices on the way. But me, honestly, seeing every day, um, challenging with the best players in the country, uh, makes me want to go on top every, every single year. So I'm not setting up for be uh, maybe the best best in the last five years, five years or six years or one of the best. I'm setting up to be the greatest, the greatest Philippine football player there ever been, and therefore I sacrifice a lot. I work triple the amount of every each player in the country and outside of the country with a Filipino passport. That's why the habits and the discipline keep you on the track and uh, make you successful in the end of the day. Hassan. Mm -hmm. um, what do you believe are the traits and habits that a player would need to build to be able to be the best in the country? Uh, first thing first, you must have um, you know, pride in presenting the nation. Um, when you don the jersey, national team jersey, you, you, know, you have to know that it means a lot to yourself. And, you know, out of, let's say, Singapore, we don't have um, that many people, like, let's say, 5 million like you, for myself, like, you know, if I'm in goal means um, I'm the only chosen one to be in goal out of 5 million. So, so I have to know all this that I must appreciate uh, the opportunities given. Um, so in return, I have to show, I have to, you know, return the favor by, by giving everything, um, you know, for the country. So, so it's all, it's all about pride. It's all about how you appreciate um, or uh, the opportunity given. Definitely love the positive aspect to your mental yeah. state, to making sure that 
you like as I said, you've been like the number one goalkeeper for Singapore, has one of the most caps for Singapore as well. And as we talk about that, you're considered a veteran yeah. national yeah. team player. <laughs> and so how do you push yourself and of course your teammates to get to that next level? Um you know, I grew up in, in, in a different environment as compared to the younger players nowadays. Um, you know, I grew up washing uh, my senior players' boots when when I was young, and then and I thought that, you know, initially I thought there was a torture, but then again, it taught me how to take care of myself, uh, how to take care of my boots, how to take care of my gloves. So, like they said, you know, your boots or your gloves are your like your second wife. You know, if you take good care of them, then they will take good care of you. So I learned a lot because now nowadays um, the millennials, uh, you know, they, they they live in a different environment. I I cannot deny that. So, um, and they, you know, I feel that I, what I learned back then, you know, I try to share my experience with the younger players nowadays, but. Um, then again, it's two different um, lives, you see. So, but having said that, uh, every time when I feel that the younger players, uh, you know, they tend to be relaxed in training, you know, having more fun than putting in the hard work, and then that's when I will come in as a, if a 36-year-old is pushing, you know, every single training and you are, the younger ones are having fun instead of putting the hard work, and something is wrong. So. So that's when I think they they will realize that uh, okay, uh, the older ones are pushing more than us. So yeah, it, it, no, I have to lead by example. It's not just about you know talk talk talk. It's not just that I have to put in the action. I have to show them. Yeah. Strong. Um, how do you push yourself and your team, of course, to get to that next level? Well, uh, I always told myself that. Well, I need to be the best of myself, and and you know when you see some of your players, some of your teammates are not in the in the good form. Uh, well, you have to 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 help your your, your teammate as well. So uh, to be to be in the best level of the team, well, you you have to, to try your best. Like drop that every morning after you wake up. You have to know that what you're gonna do today. You have to track with fire. You don't you 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 don't have time to see your family. You don't have time to see your friends, and but you have to think about the big targets that everyone of the team uh, we have uh, we have to think about that. So I think if we try the best we can, the best we have, um, the result will will will, will come. How about you, Shrak? Um, how do you push your teammates, especially, to get on your level and push them to that next level as well? I uh, clearly experienced this when I was part of the under twenty three at the Sea Games in December last year, December November. Yes. When did that December. event take place? Yeah, somewhere there. So when you go there and you start being the first of the practice. Uh, you go to the gym using utilities to get yourself better or recover faster or whatever. The people around you in your environment, they take note. They might not take it immediately, but they take note. And then they're creating a habit. They're creating a, a, a philosophy for themselves to get better every day. That motivates me right back, you know. And then from there on, everyone steps up and improves in their game, improves physical athlete aspects and um, it's good because in that in that especially in that environment you create something that will never stop i want to be better than him i want to be better than the other and so on and so on and from there on you create a great team which um, produces great results and uh, i saw it with the national team and then if you fo follow them on instagram they're working all out hard, very, very hard. And I think I played a major role in, in that scenario last year and then creating, obviously, the the work habit they have now until up to now. It's a very tough time. we in it, especially in the Philippines, six months, no sports, seven months, actually. Then some of the teams haven't played a competitive match in a year. 
And then seeing them, following them on Instagram, they're working out, keep getting six packs, getting bulky and, and strong and, and living in that, in that dream. That's really, really great to see. And uh, I think everyone needs a role model in the team and I'm not shy to be that role model. Hassan, as you're talking about, like with Shrock as well, same thing that mm -hmm. how to show what you are or that you're the best is that not yeah. by always talking. Of course, you can yeah, inspire by doing that. But of course, also by really showing it on the pitch, who's first, who trains the hardest, who's yeah. there first and who leaves last. I think that's not, that, not that's a normal, that's a, a, a practice. Um, you know, you know like, like I said, I learned a lot when I was young because I, when I saw my senior players coming in early and leaving, uh, leaving the, the training um, last few players, I mean, the last few people in the changing room, something is wrong. You know, I'm the younger ones. I, you know, after training, I would just leave like that. And, and when I saw my senior players, they stay behind, they do extra. And I wonder why, why are we not doing that? So, so I learn all that and then I apply even till now. You know, I will be the first one to come, last one to leave. So, um, it's not about staying there just to show people, hey, um, I'm the first one to come. But, it's what you do when you first arrive and what you do when you last leave. Definitely about setting your intentions, right? Yes, correct. Okay, and of course, moving on, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it really has disrupted football momentum, as Shrock was saying, and has caused a lot of uncertainty. As top athletes, how are you able to stay resilient through all this? And how are you able to take care of your physical and mental health during these tough times? Hassan? To be honest, it has not been a good uh, year for everyone, not only for the athletes, for the uh, professional football players, but also for everyone. Um, you know, I keep, I, kept, I keep telling myself that, you know, I'm very fortunate to have football on my side. Um, you know, some some other people they lose their jobs. Um, you know, they don't get um, you know get their salary cut uh, being cut, and then all those uh, unfortunate uh, incidents happen to them. But you no know, football. You no, know, we are we are still playing football. We still you know, we do still have our contracts. So that was what came into my mind. That's the first thing you know. I should appreciate football. So then comes next is I have to stay fit you know when you know first few I think first few weeks when COVID uh, happened you know we were told to stay home we had we were given like um, like you know, a homework to do to keep us fit at home so the least I can do is just to complete everything or do extra so in that way I you know um, I stay I stay fit and of course I have to you know, I, I even had to change my diet just to make sure I don't eat much of a junk food, uh, you know, because it's, it, it's, 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 it's going to be a normal thing when, when, when you don't train and then you gain weight easily. So uh, I had to put all that into prospect. So, uh, yeah, a lot of things I consider. And, and, and yeah, it's all about, uh, about um, having a good routine. How about you, Truong? Uh, yeah, obviously. Um, I think only training and no games make every player feel so bored and tired. Um, it's hard to maintain uh, your good condition because you don't know when the league is uh, going to resume again. So um, I think online training with your teammates is one of the good ideas uh, because you can still uh, see your teammates and practice together but fortunately the v league our league in vietnam we don't uh, we didn't have to stop for too long uh, so mm, we are at the end of the season now so it's it's quite good in in in, in vietnam now. definitely um for shrock it's a different story so for you how have you been able to stay resilient through this long drought of no football well, I uh, had the first 10, 11 weeks uh, under the lockdown here in the Philippines um, before I left for Germany with my family. So I, in the Philippines, as you know, Natasha, it was quite strict. You cannot go out unless it's an emergency grocery or you have some bank transfers to do. 
Um, I bought a stationary bike. I got me some dumbbells in. I used and researched on on things which I can use to in order to stay fit. So I went down the parking lot. The parking lot B1 and B2 in my building is actually for visitors. So obviously there was no visitors, no cars. So I went down every day for an hour and a half to, to train, to run, to sprint, jump, whatever you can do there, play football with my kids. And then we moved to Germany and luckily the lockdown restrictions weren't that strict. So football came back pretty early, um, I would say July. So I started training in July with several teams, several clubs. Um, I would say I'm, I'm in a condition like two years before if due to pandemic for everyone else as well, how to train. And I saw people in the Philippines, athletes, football players, PBA players, they used everything they could get in order to stay fit. And that's a, it's a very, very positive note, you know. It's not normal that you don't lose your mind, don't get detrained, as you say, um, when, when you don't have your schedule, you don't have your games, you don't have your competitions, it's hard. But uh, the athletes here in the Philippines, hats down to them, they, they did their work and uh, we can be very, very proud of that. Definitely inspiring. Um, and as we just, I want to give a, a, a little focus again on that mental health aspect of how do you take care of your mind and really stay resilient. Um, how, what are the advices, I guess, that you could give everyone else out there regarding that? Let's start with you, Hassan. Um, I, spoke, I spoke to some people about this, my cousins, my relatives. Uh, they lost their jobs. And, and I told them uh, that, you know, I'm very fortunate to have football. And who knows, one day you will be fortunate as well to have something uh, coming along the way. So whatever you receive or whatever you get, especially the opportunity, just take it and, and and make sure you give everything because you never know when the next opportunity arises. So, um, like I said, if you have football at the moment, um, do respect football and make sure you, you know, like whatever you do, just think that you are fortunate. You know, you are fortunate to have this on your on your side, because I think there are millions of people uh, uh, struggling to find or even to get a dollar, or you know, they, they think when when their next dollar will come. So, yeah. Right, very inspiring, of course, and really just how much football has given so much, most especially yeah. to the players and everyone right now. We're very all fortunate that, of course, football is doing well in yeah. Singapore. How about you, Truong? I think, well, it's not about only football player. Everyone else uh, has to take care of uh, themselves and uh, be healthy every single day so that you have to uh, train yourself, you have to practice every day and just be positive and trust in the government that everything will be fine in the end. So, yeah, just be positive and disciplined to yourself. And how about for you, Shrock? Yeah, Trong is absolutely right. It's not only a tough time for, for the athletes, it's uh, all over the world. People suffering from being locked in in their condos, in their houses. Um, but regardless of the circumstances, there is things which is very, very positive. You just have to choose to see them every day. You know, for me, for example, I was um, very, very grateful to spend time with my kids, with my family, seeing them happy, healthy every morning, getting up. And I, as an athlete, the last 20 years, I could not spend that much time with my wife, with my kids, especially uh, I think I missed out sixth birthday of my eight-year-old son because of football. So I was able to to catch up time with them, uh, have them around me 24-7. was tough in the beginning, I have to say, because I'm <laughs> not used to it at all. But uh, when you choose to see the positive aspects of this, and there is always a positive aspect in every everything you do in your life, regardless how shitty it is or it might feel like, if you choose to see a positive aspect, you will uh, embrace it and you will appreciate it. Appreciate the surroundings, appreciate the environment and the, the problems you're facing at the moment. 
if as long as you appreciate them and finding for solutions, I think I feel that's the key to not losing your your mind in, in such a difficult time. Definitely something that everyone can take a key point from learning from all three of you during a time like this is really to stay positive, you know, be grateful and stay blessed always. And of course, as all of you are have turned into inspiration, most especially for all the younger athletes out there. How about growing up? Who of who have played major influences in you guys picking up football over other sports? And what did they do to really help you set football as your career path? Let's start with you, Hassan. Um, you know, I I always tell myself, uh, football is a short career. Um, it's a really a short span of uh, time. Uh, you can only spend max forty years old, forty two, forty three. So, you know, we have to look at the best. We have to look at players um, who treat football as as their life. Like you know, when I was young, I look up to Buffon. I look up to Peter Schmeichel because hey, they are thirty six, thirty eight, and then they're still training hard because they want to prolong their career. They're taking good care of themselves. So I always look up to them, and, and especially Peter Schmeichel. Um, he was crazy back then, but but as you know, he is very determined to get things right. He's de- determined to get clean sheets, all that. So um, I'm not as crazy as him, but but you know, I try I try to give everything that what he did back then. So um, as at the same time, I learn a lot from Buffon how they take care of themselves by you know. And especially the old, older ones like Casillas, um, all these goalkeepers play a big part in my in my life um, because I know that they, even the best are doing all these um, routines. Why not? You know, us as me, you know, so just just follow it and just, just take uh, exam- examples from them. And how about when like you were growing up? Like, is there anyone yeah. in your family that played football or that really helped you decide that football should be? Um, not really, <laughs> because um, you know, actually, I started football quite late when I was fourteen, fifteen, and and and, and I wasn't, you know, I I came from a, a um, financially troubled family, so I didn't, I didn't have, I don't, I don't come from a rich family, so um, you know, I it's good that uh, I have to be honest, I struggled a lot when I was young. Um, I was a road sweeper when I was young. I helped my, my dad because I know uh, it's very important that you know you are you are there for your parents, especially. So I grew up, you know. I I know I I went through hardship in life and football. So so like I said, um, now for, that, that's the reason why if if you notice, I treat football as as my life because I know when I was young, I dream um, of being a professional footballer. And you know when you become one, you know good things will come to you. You know, like good bonus, good salary. So when I was young, I wasn't, you know, I was, you know, I I don't have even like ten dollars, five dollars in my wallet. So I was struggling a lot when I was young. So I have to be thankful, you know, of all what I have now. I appreciate my life. So um, it's all about um, you know hard work that I've put in and. I appreciate the people around me, especially. That's a such an inspiring story. You know how you really just went against all the odds, and yep. were still able to accomplish so much despite not having a lot back then. Yeah, really, what you made with your life and your career—that's really inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Truong? Oh, I would say my father. Uh, he was in. Uh, he was not a. Uh, professional football player but he loves football so so much and uh, now he's so happy that uh, to see me to become a football player and especially I'm playing for the national team now I think he's so proud of me and uh, um, when I was a kid I remember that he taught me how to play football how to do a lot of basic exercises like passing, shooting, heading, and well, he's my first coach. Anyways, you know, at that time, 
uh, when I chose to uh, to go for football, everyone in my family, in my big family, they they are against my father and me. But well, he 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 told to everyone in my family that uh, he's gonna be a, a professional football player, so I would protect my son. No one would touch him. Uh, yes, so now I'm so happy for my uh, father this season. <laughs> Definitely, that's very interesting to note. It really is something special when yeah. your parent, most especially your dad, really truly believes in you and what you can do can really help you bring you to great heights as to where you are now. How about for you, Schrock? Well, I grew up in Germany, so football is basically a religion. Uh, so you go out with your friends, you get, if you like it or not, you get in touch to play football in the backyard and uh, there's many cages i call them like small sided pitches where you can play basketball football so everyone chooses to play bas uh, football as well obviously and um growing up in germany your path is only uh you can ask 999 kids out of thousand would say i want to play football i want to be a professional football. i want to be seen in tv i want to get fancy cars i want to get nice houses and all of this so me growing up, I went, my dad was a professional boxer, so I used to be playing with my friends in the backyard football, but go on, on training sessions with my dad boxing. But my, eventually my mom and my dad got separated and when I was eight, nine years old. And I pretty soon realized uh, the life we have right now, the money my mom uh, would generate juggling three jobs a day uh, was not good was really not good so the easiest way to make money is playing football but there's millions of people kids thinking of this and uh, i choose to work harder than everyone else i choose to um go after more than everyone else and that's why i became a football player i wanted to secure my family's future i wanted to give my kids a good life i don't want to turn down uh requests on i want this i want that because of all oh, we don't have a mo we have the money left or there's uh, we are tied in the end of the month or stuff like that i don't want to hear that and as as far as i concern football players get very very well paid for the little work they do as simple as that i choose to be a football player over everything else and of course as you said you've all had really great careers starting from when all of you were younger um looking back at your younger self is there one thing or anything that you would have done differently? Let's start with you, Hassan. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you know anything about me, but um, I went through three, four years of uh, injuries, um, uh, knee injury. So I was out of action for about two years. Um, I had ACL injury. And... If you ask me that question, I think what I regretted most was when I was young. I, I, I don't really took good. I don't really take good care of myself in terms of nutrition, in terms of strength work. I was very playful. I was out late nights. I was eating junk food, junk food all day long. So you know, I was, I was, I was. You know, I had a lot of weight, like excess weight on me. So yeah, then. Even after I got my injuries, when uh, let's say eight years ago, and then things started uh, to change, and, 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 and yeah, I feel better now. So the only thing that I regretted was um, was not taking good care of myself when I was young. Definitely, but something to learn from, I guess, for yeah. everyone else out there who, who are watching as well. It's our experiences that make us stronger very sure that you take great care of yourself nowadays yes i have to <laughs> how about you truong well, i'm only jealous with my friends i mean they are not football players yeah i'm jealous with them because they have beautiful school memories and uh, i have to go to school with only uh, football players in my academy since i was 12 you know, you practice with them, you, uh, you you study with them, you eat, you sleep, everything you do with them, you know. So, I mean, we have 
different way ways of life but i don't think that uh i choose to become a footballer everything happened to me by by, by chance you know from uh the, from the start from my father um i didn't decide anything but uh but now i just realized uh, how much i love football not long ago and now i'm very serious to my job and uh yeah that's all how about for you shrock yeah, Drung is uh, pointing in a good direction, actually, because, you know, when you grow up uh, in an academy, especially, I went to an academy when I was 14 years old, um, and then you are in that football environment, you just, you eat, you sleep, you drink, you eat football every day, <laughs> because your friends are around you, they are in the same academy, there is nothing uh, other to talk about than football, um, then it's, it's, uh, yeah. It becomes kind of tough if you go back home, see your friends doing different things, doing having enjoying life uh, experience, dating, going out uh, for the first time with a fake ID, stuff like that. You know, you are kind of like restricted to that life. You not get to experience the the what do you call it? Not the bad, not the bad moments, the the funny moments you will learn from in your youth. But going back to your question, for me. Uh, football was always the chosen sport, the, the way out of everything, and uh, I don't regret nothing. Every path I choose, every step, I, every decision I made on my career uh, helped me to to become what I am today and to become personally also. Football helped me um, getting a personality. You know, you, you can be a great football player, you can be an asshole off the pitch as well or you can there is also people can be both you know on the pitch but um going back like i said football is sharpening you is is making you to what you are right now and uh, every decision i made towards football towards my career was uh, always the right one looking back and even though i missed out some some great nights uh maybe in a club or a bar or with my friends in the end, it was all worth it, and I'm very grateful for the path I went on. Definitely. But how about let's switch it up. If there is an advice that you could give your younger self, advice that you could give to your younger self, most especially during hard times, what advice would you have given your younger self? Let's start with you, Truong. Uh, if I have the chance to uh, remake something again in the past, well, I just don't want to wait my time i i could have done much better i could have tried harder and um, so now i get i think i'll get better results um but you know as Trump said that uh, uh it's nothing to regret in the past because you became who you are today and you have good teammates you you try to be a, a good person in life as well so uh, everything happens for a reason. Even uh, I think I was born to be a football player. So it's yeah, it's really good now for me. Yes, I'll agree with that. You are definitely born to be a football player. <laughs> How about for you, Shrock? Uh, that that question, <laughs> that answer is really really short because I wouldn't take advice as a teenager or young adult. So. I would not have listened anyways. That's why I choose to, to uh, not giving me my younger self an advice. Okay, okay. And of course, for all these young aspiring football players of our single cup family, what message do you want to impart with them on really how to have a successful, successful football career just like you guys? Let's start with you, Hassan. What message do you have to give to them, especially if they want to have a successful football career like you have? Uh, first thing first, um, whatever you do, you have to give um, everything. Like when it comes to studies, you have to um, you know, uh, make sure you, you, you pay attention, you, you, you spend full 100% on it. So same goes to football. When you come to a trip, 
to a training session, you don't come to just play full, play around and just have fun. But um, you know, you have to give everything in terms of effort, determination. So, um, you know, like like, and you have to know that um, if you want to be the best, you have to be the best. So, like, you have to show that you know, not not just talk, just show that hey, um, I want to be better than everyone else. So, so if you have all this in mind, I to be honest, I think number one, which is very important, is the mindset. So how positive can you be? How strong can you be? And even when the when the chips are down, so it's how you get up and and all that. So I think mindset is very important. How you you change negative thinking to positive. So all that is very important. So if you start everything with you start off with a good positive mindset, you know, things will, good things will come. Definitely agree with that. Most especially with yes. everything happening right now, right. the one thing you can take control of <coughs> really is your mindset. Mind. Yes, it's the one thing that you have control over. Everything else, you just have to yeah, let the yeah, chips yeah. fall where they may. How about you, Truong? Uh, uh, you know, time flies so so fast. So you know, I also would say that uh, just don't waste the time on something doesn't make your future bright and uh, focus on football and spend a lot of time for it. Invest the time and money to your job and as much as you can. And um, uh, in our country, we've got uh, a very simple foot, which is uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, it means that if you work harder and harder, one day you will get what you deserve. Yeah. Very inspiring. How about for you, Shrock? Oh, there is really not much to add on to that to that answer because he's absolutely there. Um, if you want to be a football player, you love the sport dearly, and you have a deeply really rooted feeling towards football. Then go after it. Uh, eventually, not every, not the best talent will succeed. Um, I've seen players in back in Germany, here in the Philippines, uh, much better, much brighter skill set that I do have. But if you work and you, your thinking is towards football, eventually you will become successful. And football gives you a great life. We can all relate. If you, regardless, if you get millions paid a month or a little bit you can help out especially here in the philippines you know it yourself Kash. Uh, let's say you are the breadwinner in the family there's um, some hard-working parents in your household you have siblings to feed you have school tuitions to pay you have morocco bills going through the roofs you have everything to pay and then there you have a football player and he can support the family with what is it in the end of the day three hours of your time who who works like that three hours a day and get paid above average in a normal society. No one, except you're an athlete or a football player. And especially in football, it teaches you so much. It gives, teach you uh, to, to be humble and confident at the same time, to go after you, you get to know discipline, you learn and gain so much from the game and it gives you right back. As the, in the moment you decide to, to go after it, football will give you back. And uh, here in the Philippines, it's might considered as a, as a little bit a rich sport, but as you see in the grassroots people, two million kids uh, want to be football players, being part of, of academies, of youth teams, and they will go after it. And the next, next generation will be very, very successful in football for the Philippines, I'm so sure. And regardless what country you're in, what city, what circumstance your life and face, uh, you will always have your teammates and you will always have the support of your coaches and your club. And it makes you brothers for life and friends for life. So football for me is the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. Very inspiring, of course. Really, football, it really is the beautiful game and it really brings people all together. Most especially being able to share the screen right now with all three of you. So thank you very much, Hassan, Truong and Shrok. Thank you for all the insight and, of course, for helping us connect with all our viewers, giving them all those inspiring messages. I'm sure everyone learned more than a few things in this interview. 
So of course, we're wishing all of you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much, you, Natasha. Thank you. Very and much. For everyone watching, thank you for watching this episode of the e Singa Cup virtual event. Don't forget to check out the website for more events. Stay safe, everyone.